you know what damping factor is? Yes. Okay. The purpose of a damping factor is, is that inherently the speaker to the amplifier has got some mismatch. And I don't care if it's a solid state to there's some mismatch at certain frequencies because there are reactive components in both the amplifier and the speaker, meaning reactive, meaning they change value as a function of frequency. So the, the, the power transfer from the amplifier to the speaker is not always linear, okay? Um, the, the damping factor is designed, that's probably not the right word, you happen upon a damping factor, okay? And its, and it, and its purpose is, if you have reactive components, some of the signal that was designed to go out of the speaker now reflects back into the amplifier. Okay? It's particularly sensitive at lower frequencies. Imagine a speaker is a coil of wire over a magnet, just like a generator. So when you push that speaker, if I put a, meat, a scope on a speaker, no amplifier, and I push on the cone, you'll see it generate electrical impulses. Back to the hmm? Back to the right. So what happens with a speaker is you hit it with a low frequency transient, you know, a little bit, and that speaker pushes all that air, and then it comes back because the air is either venting out of the cabinet or it's coming back to its its neutral position, and that's generating EMF or voltage back to the amplifier. The damping factor is designed to, to, to um, it's resistive if it's designed correctly, and it's designed to damp that out. So, and, 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 and what does it sound like? Amplifiers that, that, that don't have good damping factors tend to sound sloppy in the low ends, okay? The, 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 the low end gets wobbly, it sounds sloppy, um, I'm not good with all the audiophile terms, but it doesn't have good control on the speaker at the low frequencies, okay? Here's the interesting thing, and, and if you will, the cool thing about a push-pull amplifier. So the damping factor, and, and I'm going I'm to do some math, so stay with me here. So damping factor, okay, is equal to the um, load impedance, the speaker impedance, over the amplifier impedance. And for the sake of for the sake of making it simple, we'll assume they're both resistive. So the, the, um, the lower the amplifier impedance, the higher the damping factor, just a simple ratio. So the amplifier impedance is the output impedance of the transformer as it looks into the vacuum tube, okay? Now the vacuum tube is like a big resistor. When you put voltage in, okay, the resistance goes down. When you take voltage away, as in the sun, resistance go up, goes up. So imagine this amplitude resistance goes up and down in a single-ended amplifier. So what happens to your single-ended amplifier? Your damping factor is all over the place. You don't have a fixed damping factor. In a push-pull amplifier, because any time you look back into the transformer, one of those tubes is conducting, that impedance is constant. You get a much more constant damping factor with a, with a push-pull amplifier. Do you have a frequency that you measure that damping One factor? One kilohertz. Because I can vary. Everything's in the center of the band for, for, for that purpose, for evaluating that purpose. Because a lot of people will measure it in kilohertz, which doesn't tell you anything about what it does in the base where you really need the damping You'll factor. see when, when I show you some of the data that we do on an automated basis, we do an entire suite Good. for all the parameters. Good. But when you design them, you can't design over that, unless you know there's a particular problem. One kilohertz, it's not a bad spot. Any questions related to that? Push-pull versus single-ended? It's kind of a three-martini conversation, That's but awesome. it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's the it, the they have different listening characteristics, different sonic characteristics, uh, but from a design perspective, there are distinct and different trade-offs. And we built both, we played with both. Um, what do you listen to at home? Good question. I have uh, an EHF 200 and EL34S 34, 34 at home, so both push-pull.